breaking news. There's a hot new experimental design sweeping the nation. It could be coming to a quantitative research class near you. This new station will be covering the non-equivalent before and after design, or NBAT. We will be explaining it today. It is a between groups test because it has multiple groups and it compares the mean differences between a pre and post test for each group. The one group, well, one group is an experimental group and receives a treatment between the pre and post test. The other group is the control group, thus it receives no treatment. This design sounds pretty awesome, but can we assert causation? I'm going to transition this video to Walter so we can find out. You're going to kill it, man. You're going to do great. Thank you. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you, William. Ideally, you want a design where you can assert causation in a relationship. The only possible way to do this is with a true experiment. This requires that participants are randomly selected from the population, randomly assigned to groups, and that the independent variable is manipulated by the experimenter differently for groups. In most cases, though, you cannot do a true experiment or assert causation. It is difficult to randomly select participants from the population. Even if that's possible, participants cannot always be randomly assigned if there is only one group. Or, participants might fall into natural groups, such as a class, a family, or a team of employees. Participants in natural groups may have something in common with one another, such as personal characteristics or experiences. With natural groups, you cannot generalize back to the population, because each participant was not randomly selected. In any case, you may want to study natural groups, such as sports teams. Back to you, Will. Thanks, Walter. Non-equivalent simply refers to the fact that groups may not have equivalent characteristics initially, which is problematic for asserting cause. Our example is an, of an NBAD is going to involve testing the effects of protein powder on the running times of cross-country teams in the U.S. Obviously, in real life, this would have ethical concerns, but for the sake of our experiment, the use of performance-enhancing substances will be considered ethical. Our population is all NCAA cross-country runners in the U.S. We are going to use two NCAA cross-country teams, and these teams will be a convenient sample from the population. Our team will receive a set serving of protein powder every day after the first meet until the second. This is the experimental group. And the other team, which will be our control group, will receive no protein powder throughout the experiment. The participants are naturally divided into groups and not randomly assigned. Thus, it cannot be a true experiment, but it's still a quasi-experiment because there is manipulation of the IV, protein powder, no protein powder. Now, let's transition to my main man, Tim Wynn. Thanks, Will. Let's define our variables. The independent variable is the protein powder treatment. It is a nominal variable because it is categorical and qualitative. All participants will either receive a set amount set of protein powder or none at all. The dependent variable must concern the performance of participants. In cross country, we can measure performance in terms of one's time on a 5K run. The lower the time, the better the participant is said to perform. However, because we want to measure changes between the pretest and the post-test, or the first meet and second meet, we are going to subtract the post-test score from the pretest score. The result is the difference score. The pretest score is known as the baseline because it gives us a measure of initial differences between groups before the treatment is given or the post-test is administered. The difference score will be considered a continuous variable or ratio variable because there could be a zero difference score. If a group's mean run t running time did not change between the pretest and post test. As to our methods, our measurements would be from two NCAA cross country meets where both teams competed. After the first meet, one team would receive the protein powder treatment daily until the next meet and the other team would not. We could analyze the data, checking for significant differences between groups using a two by one ANOVA. Team would be the IV, describing the two levels of experimental group and control group. The DV would be the difference score between the pretest and post test. We would examine whether there was a significant difference between groups on the difference score. Similar difference scores from, for both teams would imply that the protein was not effective. Also, if the baseline or pretest significantly differed between groups, it would again be difficult to speak about the effectiveness of protein powder. Let's talk about some problems and limitations to this design. As we are using the official times measured by the cross-country judges, the internal reliability should be fairly high. However, the amount of protein powder given could, have, could differ slightly between treatments. External reliability could be threatened in several ways. The position of the researcher could have greatly affected the data, as both groups are aware that they are being judged on their performance to some degree. 
This added pressure is a specific social situation that may not be identical in a replication of the study. Also, the times of teams may vary according to the weather, location, and experience. Thus, it could be hard to replicate the study. Interim validity is threatened in several ways. First of all, there is no random assignment to groups, so the participants in each group may be like one another. Maturation between the two meets could explain changes in performance and not the protein pattern. This is one of the biggest threats to internal validity in our design. An example could be the coach of one team trains his runners more intensely, or both teams may improve because of practice between the meets. The physical effects of the first meet might affect the biological response to the protein powder or performance in the second meet. The researcher's presence may be seen as threatening or as a challenge, affecting the performance of the groups. Similarly, the protein powder could have a placebo effect on the experimental group. A future design might give the control group a placebo performance enhancer. It is also possible that some of the participants in the control group could be taking protein powder on their own. Or if one team talks with the other team about the treatment, it could affect performance in the second meet. Now onto external validity, or the generalizability of the results to the population. Our population is, again, all NCAA cross-country runners. The participants were not randomly selected from all runners, and thus there are selection effects. Our participants may react differently to the protein powder in an experimental situation than if their coach offered the substance, or if it was used by the choice of individual runners. Also, the teams chosen may differ greatly from teams across the country in reaction to protein powder and average times on the 5k run. All of these are threats to external validity. Thank you, Mike. Let's review. The NBAT has an advantage as a quasi-experimental design over correlational designs, for example, in that there is an IV which can be manipulated. As a between-groups test, the NBAT allows us to measure differences between the control and experimental groups. Some weaknesses, at least in our example, include no random assignment, no random selection, and thus no ability to assert cause. The ethical and physical concerns of using protein powder aside, significant findings could inspire future research of protein powder on sports performance. As our results were not generalizable to all athletes, or even runners, it could be dangerous to conclude that protein powder improves performance. Also, side effects of protein powder on the body would have to be studied as well though our experiment would add to the literature. We hope you enjoyed our video.